it is minus 29 outside and it's supposed to be cold 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 for the next well, it seems like forever it's gonna be minus 33 tonight uh, minus 35 last night and I'm looking at my shed let's just see what kind of conditions we have going on in here so the fans are at idle high tech temperature gauge so about one degree around the outside of the shed and right in the middle of the bees is almost four so that's quite content that's showing the cold air that's coming in and it's taking a little bit to take that cold air and mixing that cold air with the warm air within the shed there's very little air exchange out so that cold extreme cold air coming in is taking a little while to mix that's what that's telling me. Let's go take a look at the vents. And like I would expect, the bees are nicely tucked in. Nice and clean. Not overly concerned. I haven't yet swept the floor. I'm starting to smell the shed a bit. I just cleaned out the loading pad so I'm able to get actually get out of the honey house now. So I'll be working at relieving all those dead bees on the floor today or tomorrow. Whew, I can feel the cold air coming in. There's more air exchange than I'd appreciate. That, I'd, I always say that the amount of air coming in at low idle is that of like a table fan on medium, but that amount of airflow coming in, I'd have to say matches what's being blown there on high. So I have two of those vents. That's a lot of air exchange coming into that shed. Which really amazes me minus 29 degree air coming in and with that air exchange i have 1600 no i got some custom hives there too so i'll have like uh 1750 or 1800 hives in this building maintaining the temperature at you know around that three to four degrees it's very encouraging I want to see what the uh, CO2 is in here, a low air exchange like that. Let's see what we have. So many bees on the floor, definitely need to get at that. Not, yeah, I guess there's a lot of drop. I'd say there's not much drop, but it's enough. Okay, so my CO2 is 3343. And it says it's nine degrees in here. That can't be right. Oh, you know why? Because I had it in the other room. It hasn't, this hasn't bounced, like this unit's probably warm. So that's why it's reading warm. How do I quieten that down? There we go. I wonder, there sure is a lot of heat coming off these colonies. To be able to maintain a 45 by 50 with a 12 foot ceiling at three degrees, during some extremely frigid weather it takes a lot of heat energy to be able to do that this room is very well insulated all around i even have two inch foam underneath the cement pad so we have lots of insulation but we also have lots of little bees 
creating the warmth. There's a lot of study going on in regards to CO2 and what the bees can tolerate and what's actually going on within those clusters. And they say these bees kind of encapsulate themselves in concentrations up around 40,000 parts per million and higher. And in, they say it kind of sends them into a trance just to help them slow down, help them endure the long winter help them maybe extend their lifespan a little bit further, help reduce the demands on feed. Boy, these guys are all tucked in, so it looks so nice. And also, it might help with mites in an indirect way. Mites cannot tolerate high levels of CO2, but the bees are adapt so they can. So a higher CO2 level might actually help with any residual mites on these bees. And how to manipulate the shed in that manner without, you know, killing off the whole shed. And there's one that seems to have fallen down. I don't have any recommendations on how to manage shed CO2. I know there's guys that do it, but I'm certainly not comfortable in doing that yet. So I await a little bit more work in regards to that matter. There's a box that needs replacing. And another one. But I wonder, you know, with this amount of airflow coming in, I can feel that cold air coming into the shed. Like I say, it's just like one of those box fans blowing. That's the amount of air volume I think I'm feeling coming in. And these bees are able to hold this temperature. So I wonder, I wonder, what if I turn off these ventilation fans for a couple hours? I wonder what the rebound would be in temperature. Or CO2. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, this is dropping. So it's 31.55 CO2. And this has been in my pocket, so... I'm not reading that temperature because it's wrong. It's in my pocket. 28% humidity, so the humidity is pretty low. Which is not surprising because of that cold, dry air coming in, mixing, and then that warm, humid air being expelled. So, if I turn off the fans... I wonder how long it would take. I wonder what temperature this shed would be at in two or three hours. I wonder what the CO2 level would be at in two or three hours. Exhaust fans. Off. The fans are off. So I'm two hours in and I'm just sweeping the floor, making use of my time just kind of sticking around the shed. I don't know if that is working the bees up at all. So, you know, eight to eight and a half degrees in the shed now, so the temperature definitely has increased. I will just see if the CO2 has increased to see if it's still safe to work in here before I continue my sweepings. This will be my fourth wheelbarrow of bees. Just kind of swept them up, scooping them off the floor and dumping them into the pasture. So I'm just about done sweeping. I'll just go over and see what the CO2 is right now. Oh, the bees are sure woke up. They are bearding. Yikes. It's 
so that's a lot different than two hours ago so let's see what the temperature well red eight and a half but I want to see this will tell me what this reads they're still calm just bulging out a little bit what is my co2 in here whoa it's, ten, it's over it's off the scale that means it's 10,000 parts per million in this shed right now at 8.6 degrees that's quite dangerous actually maybe I should turn the fans back on 53% humidity yeah I'm gonna have to look after my own health here 10,000 parts per million well it's over 10,000 this thing reads up to 10,000 and that was in a matter of what is that? Uh, 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. So three hours. I'll turn the fans back on. And maybe I'll just hold this little project as a... Whoa! That increased fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Okay, so my next... Here, let me get out of the room. So my next uh, thing I'm going to do is turn the fan on. Uh. Oh, it's so bright. Both fans are on. She is purging the air out now. Well, that air feels heavy. Sounds like I have a bearing going on the one motor there. I'll have to add a little bit of oil to it. So I'm going to go load that semi full of corn and I'll come back and I'll see what the CO2 levels are reading when I get back. Uh, and I'll do a little bit of research just to make sure that uh, well, I'll see what the lethal level of CO2 is for a person to enter a room. This thing only goes up to 10,000 so who knows what it was at. Okay, this has been an hour now. I've just filled the semi of corn the air is purged out of the building so it's now it's three to four and a half degrees the one fan is running the other one is not so that caught me off guard just a little bit I guess I should have done a little more research before I uh, did that but I wasn't expecting it to be so high um, I was looking up in Google and it says that for CO2 concentrations you're looking at 10,000 parts per million as okay for eight hours in duration so I'm guessing that's what I was at at 30,000 parts per million you're good for 15 minutes problem is I didn't know because this thing only reads 10,000 so I imagine it was at least 12 or 15,000 parts per million who knows I'm not even sure so it's not worth risking having a beekeeper fallen down in the aisles because of breathing in too much CO2 and passing out so there you go Be quiet the uh, relative humidity at 36 temperature at 4.5 and CO2 at 2,500 parts per million. So that's one hour purging the air out of the shed. And my girls have tucked themselves back in by the looks of it. Now they're still out a bit. Got them going a little bit anyways. 
I imagine there was a warmth. I'm not sure if the CO2 would have brought him alive like that. In theory, it should have, you know, backed him off a bit. But that, I really don't know. Because I don't know much about what CO2 does to bees. There's a lot of beekeepers with more experience on that than me. And there's a lot of study going on right now in regards to CO2 and the wintering behavior of honeybees. So I am very interested and tuned in to that type of research. Look at this hive. It's just... They said, yep. I'm going to have to maybe... Gosh, almost make me want to put a, a feeder into this colony. I have to trust, though, that I gave these girls what they need. It'd be a shame to see something like that fall apart because of starvation, though. We are getting close to March, and this is about the time I start fuss, fuss, fussing. So there you go, 2,500 parts per million. So that was three hours, and it went from, what was it, 3,200 parts per million? And the temperature around the three to four. Three hours, it rose up to over eight, and then the parts per million rose to over 10,000. Just like that.